Hello and welcome to Reporters. This week we're taking you to Rwanda in Africa. This beautiful, impoverished country has in many respects struggled to shake off its colonial past, gaining independence finally from Belgium in 1962. Odd, perhaps, then, that the government in Kigali would opt, 35 years later, to apply to the British Commonwealth. Yet that move, in large part, had its roots in testy diplomatic relations with France, a long-running dispute between the country over Paris's alleged complicity in the devastating 1994 genocide. Well, tensions between the two have now slightly thawed, with both Paris and Kigali looking to normalise formal ties once again. But in the meantime, Rwanda has become the 54th member of the English-dominated Commonwealth and is setting about making the switch from being francophone. So schools, businesses, infrastructures, even cars are gearing up for the overhaul, a transformation that has delighted some, others though proving a bit more reluctant. Well, Scott Hillier and Rhiannon Hobbins went to Rwanda to hear all about it. Take a look. No. 6 a.m. Kigali. In the country known as the land of a thousand hills, 12-year-old Derek Nkbuto is preparing for school. Derek's mother, Yumetsi, works long hours selling clothes in the central market to help pay for his school fees. His father is not at home. He works in a far-off province, making it back to Kigali on the weekends. Rwanda is one of the most densely populated countries in Africa. It also has a literacy rate that is substantially increasing every year. Schools are full, attendance levels are high, and until last year, every Rwandan student was taught in French. With what some critics say was a hasty and disruptive move, the Rwandan education system was changed from French to English virtually overnight. At the beginning of the last school year, students who had done all of their education in French found themselves in classes where all of their teaching was done exclusively in English. The mainly French-speaking teachers were given English lessons at the beginning of the school year to help prepare them for the change. I tried to speak it, uh, but uh, we meet uh, sometimes uh, the problems about language. But uh, uh, the, the, our colleagues, our Anglophone colleagues, uh, help us uh, about some vocabularies uh, and we try to, to teach in English. This school's headmaster does not miss the French system. It's a system which sort of uh, colonizes. It does not liberate, it is not a liberal system. It's a, it's a system that uh, somehow oppresses. Derek does not appear to have been affected by the language change. A clever boy, he seems to vindicate the Rwandan government's decision. English was good to speak. Uh, French was very, very difficult. The 1994 Rwandan genocide, where more than 800,000 people were murdered, has changed the way that Rwanda looks at itself and at other nations. These gruesome events are at the heart of the bad relationship between France and Rwanda. For Rwandans, French brings back bad memories, things from a bloody past. A French judge has claimed that President Kagame helped spark the killing spree, and in return Rwanda has accused France of complicity in the genocide. President Kagame has not been shy in expressing his thoughts on the matter, in English of course. As for the French, they are all in what happened in Rwanda, is self-evident. They knowingly trained and armed government soldiers and militia. With such undiplomatic accusations being traded, it came as a surprise when the two countries announced, one day after Rwanda was admitted into the Commonwealth, that they will restore diplomatic relations. Rwanda's admission into the English-dominated Commonwealth was a sharp rebuke to France, but it is determined not to take the shifting of allegiances laying down. The French government does not want to lose its influence in this part of Africa. The Commonwealth is an organisation made up of 53 countries, many of them being former British colonies. It encompasses 2 billion people and at its head is Queen Elizabeth II. Rwanda's admission into the Commonwealth is the culmination of many years of hard work to meet the entry criteria. This is a devastatingly poor nation where more than 60% of the population lives below the poverty line. It is also a tightly controlled country and no locals will speak on camera about the omnipresent anti-French feeling here. Everybody follows the government's stated line. 
I believe that there is something to benefit, to learn from some of these countries, to share experiences, to benefit from trade, to benefit from uh, all areas that can help us advance the lives of our people. But what does this mean to the average Rwandan? Rwanda is largely a rural society with 80% of the population living in the countryside. The earth is fertile, water is plentiful and families large. John Baptiste Bakanahi is 49 years of age. He has seven children, four goats, one cow and two hectares of land where he grows pineapples, bananas and tomatoes. <laughs> While he speaks neither French nor English, he believes in what his government tells him that his day-to-day -day life will be better now that Rwanda is part of the Commonwealth. I don't think that Rwandans need French, because many countries don't speak it. As farmers, we're not complicated, you know. We didn't study, and our needs are not so big. We just need to feed our kids, pay their school fees, and take care of our families. Is the Commonwealth good for me? Well, that's for our government to decide. At the other end of the scale is Fustin Mabundu. He travels extensively, speaks English fluently, and runs a successful coffee exporting business that is growing at 20% a year. He does not speak French, and he's critical of France's lack of drive in the world of international business. For him, the French attitude to making money just does not add up. I can tell you for sure uh, it's a very good thing uh, to join the Commonwealth. Um, when you look at uh, Western Europe and Western European countries that uh, have uh, develop their entrepreneurial skills among the businessmen, the business community. We know that France has not fared so well in development of entrepreneurship. And uh, this is uh, what we've been caught in over the years uh, because we've had, uh, Rwanda has had contact with the French business, with French uh, trade for so many years. And uh, as you can see, we're not doing so well compared to our neighbors in Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania who have had relations with the uh, UK and uh, we feel that we can gain a lot by joining the Commonwealth because we'll import that culture, that new culture, we'll improve our entrepreneurial skills and we'll uh, make bigger strides in trade. Business might be going well for Rwandans, but after the diplomatic row three years ago, most French companies closed down here, as did the French Embassy and associated cultural centres. Belgium remains the largest francophone community in Rwanda, Amongst its ranks is businessman Willy Fabre. He says that Rwanda will find it hard to rid itself totally of French influence, but they are trying, even going as far as planning to drive on the same side of the road as the English. Driving on the other side of the road is impossible. I couldn't imagine it. It's unthinkable. In most countries around the world, you drive on the right side, and here we want to do the opposite. It's not reasonable. Mr. Fab believes that Rwanda's desire to disentangle itself from France is justified, but that it will not be a very easy process. It's impossible to move away from French culture. It's been here for 100 years. It's impossible to change that. In fact, it's neither reasonable nor logical to want to replace the French language. It's simply a gut reaction. It's like an allergic reaction, which is understandable. It's due to the fact that France took part in the genocide. And that's what's painful. It adds to this decision to get rid of the French language. Because France's role in the genocide was so huge. Whatever side of the road you drive on, it's hard not to see the pleasure that the English government, who currently supports Rwanda to the tune of 70 million euros a year, has in welcoming them into the Commonwealth. Ex-Prime Minister Tony Blair is one of their biggest supporters. Yeah, we think that uh, it's a good thing for Rwanda to, to join the Commonwealth. I think it's um, many of the problems of this country in the past have uh, risen out of uh, isolation and out of an inward-looking uh, political class. And uh, so anything that opens up Rwanda to the outside world, I think, is, uh, is positive. It opens up a wide range of contacts uh, in, in, in countries which often have come through sim you know, similar difficult experiences of their own. Despite the announcement that France and Rwanda have recently restored diplomatic relations, it's hard to see how francophone this country will remain in a generation's time. Ways to help speed up the transition from francophone to anglophone are happening at many different levels. Things are moving at a rapid pace here, 
often to the bemusement of the locals. Can you kick it? Yes, the emblematic English game that remains incomprehensible to much of the world, particularly the French, has gained a foothold here in Rwanda. With the French not here anymore, it has opened up the door for the English to spread their form of culture. There have been suggestions that this swapping of allegiance harks back to the dark days when countries like France and England held African colonies. But the Rwandan government says that this is not the case at all. There is constant activity in this country. People are on the move, busy. Houses are being built. Business is being done. It is a vigour that is surprising, refreshing, and much needed in this poor country, where the struggle to contain an exploding birth rate is daunting. Rwandans have a tremendous amount of expectations from the Commonwealth. There is a strong belief that for this country to move away from its dark past and to compete on an international level, it has to adopt a new way of doing things, a new outlook, even a new language. So from the schools and the sporting fields, to the street orphans who have formed a singing troupe that travels the world showcasing the very best of Rwanda's culture, to the places of business, the farms that nestle atop lush mountainsides and on the sparkling lakes of this once devastated but now vibrant nation, where once upon a time millions of people grew up learning French, one thing is for certain. My name is Nyatimana Soranji. Change is in the air here, and France is only going to play a very small part in it. C'est la vie. Okay, well, that's it then for this edition of Reporters. To see that program again, you can see it on our website, www.france24.com. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.